We want to find the area of the surface obtained by rotating the curve y equals the square root of three x from x equals zero to x equals six about the x-axis. Looking at this first graph, this blue curve is y equals the square root of three x. We want to consider this graph on the interval from zero to six, where x equals zero would be the y-axis, x equals six would be this vertical line here. So if we rotate this about the x-axis, we would get this surface here, and our goal is to find the area of the surface, or the surface area. So looking at our notes below, we have a general formula for the surface area of revolution when we have any horizontal axis of rotation given by this formula. In the special case where the axis of rotation is the x-axis, we can use this formula here. Let's first look at the general formula where r of x gives the distance from the curve to the axis of rotation. So we can also think of this as the radius function. And f prime of x is a derivative of the given function. And when we have rotation about the x-axis, which is our case, the function giving the distance from the curve to the axis of rotation would just be the given function f of x, as long as f of x is non-negative over the interval from a to b. So looking at our graph here on the left, the distance from the curve to the axis of rotation is the function r of x, which again in this case, because the axis of rotation is the x-axis, this is the same as the given function f of x. So to begin to set this up, we know f of x, the given function, equals the square root of three x, which we can also write as three x raised to the one-half power. We'll also have to find f prime of x. So f prime of x is equal to the derivative of three x raised to the one-half power, which requires a chain rule. We'd have one-half times three x raised to the power of one-half minus one, that's negative one-half, times the derivative of three x, which would be three, so this product would give us three times three x raised to the power of negative one-half, all divided by two. Notice how we'll have to square f prime of x. Let's go ahead and do that now. We'd have all of this squared, so we'd have three times three x to the negative one-half all over two squared. Well, the exponent on the three is one, and the exponent on two is one, so now we'll multiply the exponents. So we'd have three squared, and then times three x raised to the power of negative one, all over two squared. Let's continue simplifying this. Let's move three x to negative one down to the denominator. So we'd have nine all over four times three x to the first. Notice how the nine and the three simplify. So this simplifies to three all over four x. And now we have all the information we need in order to set up the integral to determine the surface area. The surface area is equal to two pi times the integral from zero to six of f of x, which is the square root of three x, times the square root of one plus the square of f prime of x, which we already found, is three over four x. Let's evaluate this on the next slide. For our next step, because the square root of three x equals the square root of three times the square root of x, let's go ahead and factor out the square root of three and write this as two square root three pi times integral from zero to six of the square root of x times the square root of the quantity one plus three over four x. Now let's go ahead and multiply these two square roots by multiplying the radicands with the expressions underneath the square roots. So we have two square root three pi times integral from zero to six of the square root of x times the quantity one plus three over four x. Let's go and distribute the x. So we'd have the square root of one times x is x, plus, notice when we multiply x and three over four x, the x's simplify out, so we're just left with plus three fourths. Let's go ahead and write this using a rational exponent. So we'd have the quantity x plus three fourths raised to the one half power. We're probably thinking u substitution, where we'd have u equal the quantity x plus three fourths, and therefore differential u is equal to just one dx. 
So we can think of all of this as just u to the one half du. So the antiderivative with respect to u would just be u to the three halves divided by three halves, or two thirds u to the three halves. So with respect to x, we'd have two thirds times the quantity x plus three fourths raised to the three halves. Let's go and factor out the two thirds. So we'd have four square root three pi all over three, and we're left with the quantity x plus three fourths raised to three halves. Now we need to find big F of b minus big F of a, and let's do this on the next slide. When x is equal to six, we would have the quantity six plus three fourths raised to three halves minus, when x is zero, we'd have three fourths raised to three halves. And let's evaluate this on the calculator, and let's make sure we enter this correctly. So I'm gonna start with an open parenthesis, and then four square root three, right arrow, pi, close parenthesis, divided by three. I'm gonna multiply this fraction by this difference here. So now we'll have two open parentheses, open, open, and then we have six plus three-fourths, close parenthesis, raised to the power of three-halves, right arrow, minus, open parenthesis, three divided by four, close parenthesis, raised to the power of three-halves, right arrow, close parenthesis, and enter. So to four decimal places, we'd have approximately 122.5221. And this is surface area, or area, so this would be square units. Of course, this is an approximate surface area. So this is the approximate surface area of the surface here, generated by rotating y equals the square root of three x over the interval from zero to six about the x-axis. I hope you found this helpful.